Hi, I'm Gene Camerata, chef, teacher, and thoroughbred horse racing enthusiast. I'm here today in Stinson Park in Omaha, Nebraska, home of Warren Buffett, some kind of series that involves college kids, and the best beef in the world. Uh, this is the former site of Exarbon Racetrack from 1920 to 1995. Exarbon, Nebraska spelled backwards. There was a vibrant racetrack and grandstand that regularly enjoyed top 10 national attendance averages. The act saw record-setting $3.5 million betting days, a coliseum that hosted minor league basketball and hockey teams, concerts from Sinatra to Nirvana, bull riding, world-class boxing, and in 1975, those in attendance saw a tornado race across the sky and almost totally destroy the house that my wife and family and I live in now. I talked to a lot of old timers in Omaha about the good old days at Exarbon and the names of two horses constantly come up. It is impossible to say the words favorite and Exarbon in the same sentence and not have Who Doctor Who be the subject. The doctor, a Nebraska bred horse, told a lifetime record of 33 wins, 16 seconds, and 5 thirds in 64 career starts. 18 stakes wins at Exarbon alone and in 1988, a 31 and a length match racing dominance highlighted a career that had fans chanting, Who? Who? from the grandstands every time Who Doctor Who was in the house. Omaha was born and raised in Kentucky and won the 1935 Triple Crown. His dad, Gallant Fox, had won the 1930 Triple Crown. They still remain the only father-son team to have ever won the Triple Crown. In 1950, while well into retirement, Omaha the horse was moved to a farm 45 miles outside Omaha the city. During the 50s, he was brought to Exarbon for fans to see. When Omaha died in 1959 at the age of 27, he was buried in the circle of champions at Exarbon. After the close of Exarbon, the Nebraska Horsemen's Benevolent Association opened Horsemen's Park in 1998. Horseman's is a simulcast facility with up to 3,000 seats and over 700 TVs hosting coast-to-coast -coast live simulcast racing 364 days a year. I'm here outside of Horseman's Park. We're getting ready for the live meet, which starts tonight. Horseman's Park is a 5 eighths of a mile bull ring oval as compared to a larger track. A lot of good racing, a lot of good people. Let's get to that, and you know what? I think we should go back in the stables and see if we can run into anybody we know. Hi, Cheyenne. Hi. And I understand you are this horse's owner. Yes, I am. And what's the horse's name? Beach Cooler. Beach cooler. And how's he feeling? He's racing today, right? Yes, he is. And I understand he just got a shot of laces. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for the vet to come around and give me mine. Hey, hi. Hi there. Oh, yeah, you like the taste of that. I think there might be a little waffle on my arm there. But, okay. I I'll be friends with you. You want to make this your career? Yes, I do. It's my passion. At an event like this sometimes with a state fair kind of atmosphere, they have things like ostrich races. As you notice, these ostriches are getting a little nervous because they know not only have I prepared ostrich, but it has been kind of tasty. I don't really have any ostrich handicapping tips, but if you're going to cook it, you want to cook it long and slow to tenderize it.
beautiful day, just enough clouds in the sky, people are starting to show up, you can feel the energy in the air. We're going to show you what live racing is all about. Some people like to wait until the last minute to bet the races to see what happens with the odds. On a day like today, I like to bet all the races ahead of time. Especially there's four races and there's a pick four. I want to be in on that pick four. So in this first race, I have a bunch of things going, but the one four eight, any one of those horses would be extremely beneficial to all of us. Everyone has their own theory of horse racing betting. And there's a lot of things involved, colors, names, numerical combinations. For instance, in my family, it started with my grandfather, George, boxing the 2-4. And he always boxed the 2-4. And because of that, my mother, Rita, God rest her soul, always boxed the 2-4. So on any big racing day, the first thing I do is I box the 2-4 always. One of the nice things ride. I nice always ride. like to do, if by chance, in a big race, I hit a big 2-4, I split it in half. And I take half, and I split the other half between my kids, Luke and Franny, and I give them that and I say, this is from your grandmother. So that's kind of cool. The name of the show is the Trackside Skinny. You know, like the inside information. Uh -huh. So. What I'd like to do is ask you, so, what's the skinny? And you can give me any answer you want, like, I don't know, you know, you're asking the wrong guy or uh, whatever. I, I, I don't know. Okay, that's cool. So what's the skinny? Yeah. <laughs> what do you like most about live racing? Uh, the atmosphere. I like smoking cigars outside. I like watching the horses. That's nice. I like a horse that <laughs> winks at me when he's going by sometimes. Yeah, like they do that too. Look We're looking for Buffalo Creek Hawk on the lead. I think Joe runs the battle. All right. So when you're at the track, how do you pick a horse? Well, first I look at the number, because I like the horse. May the swans be with us. Then I look at the name. How do you pick a horse? What, what do you look for in a horse? Sometimes the odds, but I like to just go by the names too. And then I look at the jockey, and then I make a decision. That's an awful lot of work. I know. No wonder you're tired. I know. Okay, so this is someone that might know the inside skinny, but she can't tell us. Okay? Well, I really, I, I don't stuff that. I've been writing this all day. Uh, how, what do you like most about live racing? Everything. The people. I'm a people watcher. I love the horses. Jay, did you bet this race? How do you pick a horse? It's all about the number or the name for me. Number or the name? My yep. mom always boxed a 2 4, so I always box a 2 4. Three, always. Four. I'm 3 4 too. You're 3 4, I'm 2 4, you guys are 3 4. Oh, so maybe we should just box the 2 3 4. <laughs> yeah, let's try that. Oh, what's the inside skinny? On the track? Uh, the, just in general. Yeah, well, horse racing still alive and well in the ground. I like the gray ones. Okay, so it's really nice when you live around here, like the one behind me. But I kind of like a mom too. Good to be king. Owned by John Harris, who works for out in California. Very important question. So what's the skinny? The skinny is to come out and have fun and All right. And to pull a beer. All right, that's the skinny. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was perfect. That was great. We're with the Sons of Italy here at Horseman's Park. When it's time to enjoy some food, and that happens in the middle of the afternoon, you start to get a little bit hungry, and you really want to eat, especially if you're drinking beverages. And here at Horseman's Park, the number one choice is the Italian sausage and pepper sandwich with my good friend, Chef Turco. How's it going over here? Yeah, sure. Uh, good, fine. Uh, it's a beautiful thing you got going here. It smells good. I said earlier, 
the smell of Italian sausage makes the Italian women come closer to you. It's a That's beautiful right. thing. It is a beautiful <laughs> thing. <laughs> Okay, we're here. We're here with Butch Turco uh, from the Sons of Italy. He has provided us with these sandwiches. I must say we did pay because it's for a good cause, obviously, but it's a beautiful sandwich. I will tell you, I did make the guy put a little extra peppers. I was like, come on, it's for TV. So he put some extra peppers. I'll try anything, I don't care. Butch, how are you feeling today? Feeling great. You You're got ready. a son who's a trainer. Yes, sir. His name is Chuck. He's doing very well in this part of the world. You know, I know you love the kid and he loves you, but do you have a bet against him? Oh yeah, why not? He can't bet his horses all the time. Well, and I think too, you know, if I had a kid who was a trainer, I might consider myself like the kiss of death, so I might stay away from his horses. That happens sometimes, that's why I don't bet him. Tell us a little bit about the Sons of Italy. Well, we're a non-profit making organization, uh, ethnic, Italian ethnic organization. Uh, we do a lot of charitable work throughout the city. Uh, we get uh, Catholic high schools, uh, Creighton Prep, uh, Duchenne, uh, St. Mary's. Thursday nights you do spaghetti, a bunch no, of people no. come for that. Thursday days and Friday nights. Thursday days, Friday nights, sorry. So, you are in touch with a lot of people here. Can you tell us what is the inside skinny? <laughs> I know my son's got a horse in the first race tomorrow. Tomorrow, and you like that one? Yeah. Good, okay. Tomorrow we'll talk about that a little later. We want to thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to talk to you. You're a pleasure to be around. Kumba. All right. In order to gain access to where we needed to go, we needed a certain amount of trust from people in high places. I mean, obviously, we have put in our time and people know that we are reputable, so they were okay with us doing what we did. We wanted to put a go cam on a jockey during a race. And we thought we had it pretty much set up, but at the last minute, uh, yeah, not everybody was happy, which was okay that they even considered it. But uh, we got a girl named Laura, and she was an outrider. She's the one to bring the ponies out. And she wore the go cam for us. And she got some nice shots. One of the things that was kind of neat was she was leading the horse that would ultimately win the race. And if you look at the jockey, he smiles right in the camera and you can tell there's dollar signs in his eyes. Okay, we're here and we are with Laura Kimling. Mm -hmm. And she is a, what do you call yourself? We are called a uh, pony escort, basically. You escort the horses out onto the track. Exactly. And you ever have one you'd like to totally get out of hand? Quite often, yes. And, but they know who's boss. Well, sometimes you hope they do. Right, the rider's right coming over. I feel. I really don't even notice it. I heard your dad is in the Nebraska Horse Racing Hall yes, of Fame. Yes, he is. So he was a trainer? Yep. Great. My uncle was a breeder, and uh, we also have two horses that were in there. Yeah. Emma Devil and Roman Zipper. And how long have you been doing this? My entire life. About, well, I, I wasn't exactly uh, born in a barn, but raised in one. I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, yeah. My whole life. Good for you. I was born on the streets and raised there. <laughs> so. Uh, I understand you're going to wear the camera for us today? Yes, I am. And we really appreciate it. This could be some groundbreaking stuff. We appreciate you helping us out. No problem. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's great stay, to meet you guys. Stay safe out there. Uh, we'll try. All right. <laughs> Jack Van Berg is the second winningest trainer in thoroughbred horse racing history. He actually won the Derby and he won the Breeders' Cup Classic. I know Jack Van Berg because his sister used to come to the restaurant 
come on into my kitchen and have lunch. And she brought him in. And he was great, you know, he was, I've never met a man who was so willing to talk while he was eating. Food flying in every direction. It was wonderful. How you feeling, Jack? I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling good, and after today, I'm feeling really good. Why, you make some money today? No, I didn't even bet on one, but I've been signing books, and I've seen people that I haven't seen for many years, and there's nobody better than the people of Omaha, Nebraska, and the, the state of Nebraska and Iowa. That's right. They're the greatest still... people you've ever seen, and, and it's just a blessing to be around them. That is right, and it's nice to have you here, and, and I know you got a book here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the book? Well, I had people approach me and uh, want to write a book. I never felt comfortable with them, and Chris Katulak's from Omaha here. I seen an article he wrote one day, and I really was impressed by his writing, and he had never wrote a book before, but I approached him, and he said, give me about 10 days to think it over, and I'll let you know, and, and he uh, come in 10 days and said, Jack, I'll go ahead and write the book, and we started on it. it this June, it'll be three years since he worked on it, and he got things in there, the research that he did, and the history of my father, and coming to Columbus, and building the sail barn, and, and uh, everything. He just did so much research on it, it, it turned out to be one of the greatest books that I've ever read. Not because it's me, but just everything that he covered. That's great, and I, I, he put the inscription inside my book, he put, to a good friend and the best cook in the world. That's from Jack Van Berg. That's exactly right. The only. Around. The only thing I'm really ticked off about Omaha is you closed your restaurant up, that's all. Because yeah. I look forward to coming here and eating at your place every time, I'll well, tell, tell you, you that. What, you know, you get in touch with me, I'll come to your house and cook for you, all right? That's what, I'm going to do that. Once, uh, if I ever have a party wherever I build my next farm, you're going to be there, I can tell you that. Where do you live now, Jack? I live in California, but I'm leaving there. You're going to come back here? Somewhere in the Midwest, yeah. Good. Well, we'll, we'll see you again someday. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. And Thank God you, bless Gene. you. And your Good family. to be here. All, All right. right, take care. So, the live racing in Omaha, Nebraska has come to an end. And sadly, so has our first installment of the Trackside Scheme. We lost a little money, we got a little bit of a tan, and we had a whole lot of fun. We hope you'll join us next time. We don't know where we'll be, but we hope you'll be there with us.